today we'll be talking about the methicillin resistance staphylococcus aureus so in the hospital we can see the nosocomial infection so the nosocomial infections are mainly caused by the bacteria which are resistance uh, towards um, antibiotics so we'll talk about the staphylococcus aureus at first and then we will talk about the uh, methicillin resistance properties of the staphylococcus aureus so first of all staphylococcus is the gram positive cocci so it means so it will be blue in color and it will be cocci so how what it will form it will form the cluster like cocci so usually it will be of a uh, cluster set which is also called the grape like and cluster so first of all what we have to remember is that staphylococcus are the uh, gram positive cocci so whenever there is the gram positive cocci in a cluster so we have to look uh, for the uh, catalyst test so the catalyst test if it is the catalyst test then it can be the micrococcus or it can be the staphylococcus so you do the catalyst test and if you do the fermentation test so usually the uh, staphylococcus aureus or staphylococcus groups are the fermentative whereas the micrococcus are oxidative so whenever you do the gram positive uh, gram test so gram um, test it will be the gram positive you will see the cocaine cluster then you have to do the catalyst test so staphylococcus will be the catalyst positive also the micrococcus will be the catalyst positive and in order to differentiate between the staphylococcus aureus and the micrococcus we have to uh, do the ferment oxidative and fermentative test so the staphylococcus aureus so the staphylococcus groups is the fermentative whereas the micrococcus is oxidative so in order to separate the staphylococcus aureus from rest of its species for example is staphylococcus saprophyticus staphylococcus uh, staphylococcus saprophyticus staphylococcus epidermidis so we have to do the coagulase test so the staphylococcus aureus are only the coagulase positive bacteria in the staphylococcus aureus so after doing the coagulase test it is confirmed that it is the staphylococcus aureus so coagulase positive staphylococcus so the coagulase positive staphylococcus are the staphylococcus aureus so usually staphylococcus are halo tolerant bacteria so you know the mannitol salt agar so in the mannitol salt agar there is about the 7.5 percent of the nacl so what happens is that the staphylococcus aureus is able to tolerate the 7.5 percent of the mannitol salt agar and there is the mannitol so what happens so the mannitol uh, due to the presence of the mannitol and the presence of the indicator the colonies will be the golden yellow colonies so colonies will be the golden yellow colonies so so the staphylococcus will produce the golden yellow colonies in the mannitol salt agar because uh, because of the fermentations of the mannitol and due to the presence of the indicator phenol rate it will change into the golden yellow colony so if you see the staphylococcus are the normal flora it is usually present inside the nose in, in the nostrils of the humans it not present on the every human beings but most of the people we do have the staphylococcus aureus so those staphylococcus aureus that is present in the nose may be the methicillin resistance or may not be the methicillin resistance still the research need to be done on that and various research paper has suggested that there is also the presence of methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus as the normal flora so this normal flora will not do anything to our human body but whenever this staphylococcus you know contaminates the uh, contaminates the wound then after there will be the wound infection so usually we see the staphylococcus aureus in the wound infection wound <sighs> infection so why it is called the nosocomial infection so it is called the nosocomial infection because uh, whenever there is a surgery in the hospitals so staphylococcus aureus you know contaminate the wound so wound and so what happens there will be the infection and if it is the methicillin resistance or vancomycin resistance then it can uh, cause uh, more severity 
uh, in the condition of the patient. So uh, here the methicillin resistance Staphylococcus aureus we call it MRSA in the short form. So Staphylococcus aureus so any of the Staphylococcus aureus which are resistance to the methicillin, oxacillin or cefogitin can be considered as the MRSA. So any uh, any antibiotics so or the methicillin oxacillin or cefogitin so any of the antibiotics um, if the staphylococcus aureus is resistance towards them then we can call the staphylococcus aureus as the emrsa so uh, if you go to the next slide so how the mrsa uh, becomes resistance towards the uh, cephalo uh, methicillin or other kinds of the antibiotics so methicillin or mr sorry mrs methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus or MR, uh, mrsa can secrete a penicillin binding protein too so it will bind to the cephalosporin and penicillin so which will inactivate the activity of the antibiotics so mrsa are resistance to the penicillin and the cephalosporins so nowadays the methicillin antibiotics are not used in the treatment so uh, these are not used in the treatment we usually used oxacillin and cefogitin for the antibiotic susceptibility test so whereas if we do the cefogitin uh, so it will be a good inducer of mechagen so uh, so it is better to use the cefogitin uh, to detect the mrsa instead of the oxacillin uh, oxacillin and methicillin so although we use the oxacillin and cefogitin decks for using uh, for uh, for determining the MRSA, so why it is not called the ORSA or CRSA? It is like you know we have been calling the it, it M, as the MRSA, methicillin resistance MRSA, and oxacillin and cefogitin belongs to the same groups of antibiotics. So uh, so as a historical role, so MRSA is still used, not the ORSA or CRSA. So how can we interpret it, interpret the uh, uh, whether the antibiotic whether the uh, Staphylococcus aureus are MRSC or not? So if you see here, so the Staphylococcus, if it has the zone of inhibition less than 22 mm, so then after then after it is considered as MRSA. So when you ever use the cefogitin index, and if the zone of zone of inhibition is less than 22 mm, then we can call it as the MRSA or methicillin resistance staphylococcus aureus so it is a very basic things only you have to do the uh, antibiotic susceptibility test uh, so you have to do the uh, antibiotic susceptibility test so you can do the antibiotic susceptibility test this is very easy or you can go to my previous video for this and if you keep the any of the antibiotics like oxacillin uh, or cefogitin uh, cefogitin and if you see uh, the uh, if you see the staphylococcus aureus uh, resistance uh, to one of these two antibiotics then you can call the staphylococcus as the mrsa so it is very simple i hope you have got uh, the idea about mrsa if you have anything to uh, know about the mrsa uh, you can uh, search for the other literatures uh, review and I can also uh, comment me in the comment box. Thank you.